Well, joining me now are Claire Brighton, who is the director of ATAS, and Brian Young, the chair of ATAS, which is the Association of Touring and Adventure Suppliers. So welcome, both of you. You're here in London today for the Travel Day of Action, uh, representing all of your members Absolutely. and agents selling touring and adventure holidays. Yep. Tell us, Claire, first of all, why you wanted to be here and be part of this lobbying day. Well, I think that uh, as an association, I think it's important for us to be here, but I think more importantly, ATAS is nothing without our, our suppliers and our, tra our travel agent members, so it feels right that we should be here today fighting for all of them that can't be here today. And Claire mentions it's a fight. Uh, this has been going on for many months, Brian, um, but obviously people have chosen to come together today. Why do you think people felt that, you know, they were perhaps run out of patience or, you know, why today? Um, I think it's exactly that, Lucy. I think the industry has run out of patience with the government. Um, the traffic light system hasn't been implemented as it was promised and therefore it's created lots of confusion. Consumers are now losing confidence with the traffic light system and I think the industry has just about had enough. And I think the other aspect is I just don't think the government understands how our industry operates. The fact that, you know, they say they've invested seven billion or whatever that figure is, but the reality of the situation is that you know travel agents cannot be on furlough. The amount of disruption in the last 15 months requires them to be working to service those customers, change those bookings, refund, whatever that situation is. So they just don't understand it and therefore are not supportive of it. And I think, in all honesty, it's got to a breaking point where the whole industry has decided enough is enough you need to hear our voice and stand up and listen to us and I'm hoping off the back of today that the government really do start to listen and more importantly start to understand our industry as a whole. We're not just airline, this is a travel industry that encompasses tour operators, travel agents, online travel agents, airlines, the whole kit and caboodle. And, and of course the destinations that you travel to are, are vital and many of them are absolutely dependent on tourism. 100%. I would say particularly in the touring adventure sector. Yeah. Yeah, no, without a doubt. I mean, our sector, you know, for all of the ATAS members, works on the basis of taking people into local communities. They support lots of projects overseas, and these projects and communities need travel to be operating to therefore sustain those communities and then all the social enterprise projects that all of our members support, you know, across the world. So, you know, travel goes beyond just what happens in the UK, it's actually the impact that it can have and does so much good for all of these communities around the world so yeah 100 percent it's you know, we've just got to get travel moving in a sensible and safe manner that's what we need but we need to get it moving and we need to get it moving now yeah absolutely and i know you're both heading off from here down to college green yeah. claire are you yeah. going to be meeting other members of atas there uh, who are also going to be supporting you yeah there are some other members coming and obviously lots of agents have told us they're coming as well so we're okay. going to meet all of those down there and for those who couldn't come to london today uh, i know you've been sort of coordinating uh, a sort of lobbying effort so uh, tell us what people have been doing in terms of writing to MPs etc. So I mean we've been lobbying since like ATAS has been lobbying since the beginning Brian's done a great job on the Safe Future Travel Coalition and um, and we've been sending all of those letters to, to the MPs M mine has completely ignored me unfortunately but I know that some people have had really good success with speaking to the MPs so hopefully that will grow even further today. Yeah and Brian you know realistically you know you, you talk about the government not understanding uh, how hopeful are you today of um, getting some degree of success in them listening and understanding and supporting and, and meeting your demands? Um, it's a very good question, Lucy. Uh, I would hope that you know the fact that there are going to be 800 people from across the whole of the industry here today. Various MPs have got meetings with individuals to talk about the situation. I think the tide is starting to turn, um, you know, on the government. They've got a lot now coming at them from the travel industry. You've got today's day of action, you know, all these MPs in meetings today to talk about the industry and the impact. I think, you know, they're you know, getting around it. The airlines are looking to sue the government. ABTA's looking at that. Um, on top of that, I think they're under a huge amount of pressure on the basis. We have one of the best vaccine programs in the world um, you know the reports recently saying that people coming back from the ambulance you know there's been 87 cases of COVID out of 200 odd thousand that have traveled uh, 
I think the bit they cannot get around is all these VIPs for the Euros that are coming in that will not need to self-isolate. I think that in its own right is just wrong if you're not going to open up travel to double vaccinated people. Yeah. And I get it, they're going to need to be an element of testing, but, you know, come on, you know, you can't have the situation where we're in a great position from vaccine. I understand there needs to be caution, but you can open up travel and, you know, the rate cases in certain areas would allow for travel to happen. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, the fact that they pulled the Algarve so quickly, I think was wrong. Um, they promised us they'd give time so that you wouldn't have this scramble. So I do think they're starting to realise, and I, you know, it's no coincidence, I think in the last two days, the government is saying about double vaccinated people travelling. I think the culmination of lots and lots of lobbying, Twitter storms today, you know, the, the, all the airlines getting together and such like, so I think they really are starting to understand that, you know what? And we're getting left behind. Yeah. You know, the rest of the world, like Europe, is yeah. up and going. EasyJet have moved capacity out of the UK into Europe. That's not good for the travel industry or the UK no. economy. And in your own business, Brian, G Adventures, you have tried to adapt as we've gone along. You've put in certain yeah. tours to certain areas that you thought were going to be green, and you've tried to put in. You, you've really tried to work with the government, yeah. and yet we're still in this situation and you're having to obviously change things all the time and so that must be very hard operationally if you're running yes. a business. Without a doubt it's very frustrating you can't plan you know if, if the government said like right that's it tomorrow you know these places we have to then think about setting up operationally we're very very fortunate as a company that we're global so we are operating tours around the world as we sit at this minute in time you know Americans are traveling as I said the minute those restrictions in Europe lifted our European businesses like shot up so that allows us to be able to get going quite quickly because some of those European tours are now operating with Americans, Europeans. You're ready. If Brits yeah. are allowed, so you are go. ready to, yeah. to, to, to go. But I agree it's frustrating, you know. We created a program based around Europeans and the UK knowing that they'd probably in the first instance would be Europe and then opening up. So yeah, a lot of work's gone into getting us going and it always feels like it's one step forward, two steps back and it is infuriating, it's frustrating. And I get, look, we have to do it in the right manner. I'm not saying, you know, just like, that's it. Yeah. But there is a way they can do it and sensibly do it to get our economy moving. So, yeah. Okay. And Claire, finally, you're obviously speaking to your ATAS members all the time. Yep. Uh, we're now at the end of June. Uh, it's crucial, isn't it, that we get something going for July and August. What, what, you know, how many of your members do you think are really at kind of breaking point, at, 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 you know, facing a bit of a crisis if we don't get things moving? I think it's, I think it's really difficult to say how many, but I think that um, I, I can't imagine what sort of business could survive this long without earning any money and not being able to be given any support. So I imagine a lot of them are. Okay. unfortunately. All right, well I really hope that your presence here today uh, representing all the members of ATAS, both suppliers, uh, agents and also your sort of associate members yeah. that are really part of the association, I hope Absolutely. you know your voices are heard and we wish you all the best and the success in your campaign today. So thank you to Brian Young and to Claire Brighton from ATAS. Thank, thank you. you.